Coming up on Sportston, we go from slap shots to suplexes, plus more coaching captains from our teams as they kick it, flip it, and stick it. It's all on Sportston. Aw, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Welcome to Sports and everyone, the special holiday edition as you, sir, are in the Christmas yes. spirit. Yeah, it's the new thing. Yeah, you got your, your, your Santa hat supporting the Vikings. Vikings, you got, that's right. You got both of them going there. Yeah, this yeah, is absolutely. Jeff Dinsmore. I'm Kenton Kipp. And uh, we won't have a show next Wednesday on account of Christmas. No, no I we'll know. be here. But I'm excited. But, uh, so this show will run two weeks, so we better make it a good one. You got a cold going on there, uh, I don't think that's not a cold. It's just, I'm working on this lower voice. Uh, oh. We're running it through some tests to, to see how, uh, how the audience responds to it, oh. the viewers respond to the lower voice. It's kind of, you know. I bet your wife likes that too, don't she? Well, we're not going to discuss that. Okay. Well, well I just We can discuss sports and sports only. <laughs> That's what we're going to discuss here on the sports show. Hockey, hockey, hockey. hockey. Quite the game last Yo, night as yeah. uh, Allie Thunstrom, a very recognizable man yeah. from North St. Paul, went on to Boston College, a very excellent yeah. high school and collegiate career. She comes back. And now she's and coach. She's the Polar's coach now. Yeah, yeah, but it was a good game. Uh, the Panthers, you know, have against North St. Paul, but it was a good game. Let's go to those highlights right now. As Look at this. It's the ice house. Don't jump on skates. It's not safe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go, the first period strike, Michelle Check shot and gets a goal there. Assist from Haley Brown, one to nothing, North St. Paul. Later in the third power play, Check shot wide, bounces it, Terry Strandberg, and he finds a tiny crack, gets the goal. It's two to nothing, Polars. Panthers get one back. First, Maggie Ronnie, left alone, she scores. It's a play of the week nominee, and that's a nice goal right there because yeah. it's two Star to one. that. Right there. Oh, mm, nice goal. Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> Second period. <laughs> yes, she did. I didn't say <laughs> me. All right. Panthers win the faceoff, but Polars take it away, and Lily Longevin breaks away the five pole. Watch it. Five hole right there. It, it, oh, three to one Polars. Three minutes. Just three minutes, you know, because it would have been three to one there, of course. But three minutes, respond, clearing their own defense zone. Kelly Morris, great move. Fire scores. Assist by Gabby Lohman and Hannah Schultz. Three to two Panthers within a goal. It's three to two. Huh? We go to the third period. Strandberg, nice pass to Taylor Pogroma. First shot, block sticks, row on. Insurance goal. 14 minutes to play. Four to two. But you know what? Later in the third, Maddie Walraff gives pass to Samantha Almond. She slaps enough rubber to cause the puck to trickle between the pads. Light the lamp. Oh made, man. Made it four to three. Panthers back to go within the goal, but it just was not enough. It was four to three over at North St. Paul. There's the uh, standings. You see it? Irondale. They're, actually, they got a very good team, but so does Benilde. But Spring Lake Park right there, 1-0 on the conference. They're 4-6 and six overall. So then it's Tatino Gray, Chisago, St. Louis Park, and St. Francis North Branch. So it was a, it was a good game. Then we have the uh, schedule right there at Simley. You see that? Look at it. One, two, three losses. And then they won two, and now they lost one. But uh, they'll play against Chisago Lakes at New Prague and at Minneapolis. So The Novas. Yeah, Novas. All right, the Bengals lost last night to the Armstrong Falcons in a 4-3 matchup. Falcons scored the last two goals of the game. Ooh. Uh, so they dropped that one, but they'll be taking on on Alaska, Alaska, the Wisconsin team. Alaska. And Hayward Spooner, also a Wisconsin team. The tournament before they take on Forest Lake on the 29th. Centennial just lost Ooh. to Maple Grove 2-0. Maddie Wu, the phenomenal Maddie, Maddie Wu, Wu, scoring both of the goals in that contest. So Centennial looking to bounce back after a three-game skid right now, taking on North Wright County on the 22nd before hosting Elk River on the 27th. All right. 
time for some more coach and captains. We're going to catch up with the Centennial Boys Hockey Team. Please enjoy. We were uh, very disappointed with how the season ended last year. Um, I think we had a, overall a good season, um, but come section time, you know, there's, uh, it was a very disappointing end of the season when we lost 2-1 to one to Anoka in the section uh, quarters. We, uh, we, we expect to be in the Coliseum in, in the section final game every year. Really nothing short of the X. We plan to make it there and we plan to uh, get at least 15 wins this season and make it out of a tough section five of the double. -up. Definitely we're trying to score more goals this year. Uh, got a good goaltender to help us out and start in the defensive zone and worry about offense when we get there. A lot of young guys on defense this year. We graduated four seniors last year so it'll be a big part for me to step up and lead the younger guys to a successful season. Well, growing up, I used to watch every game here as a mite growing up, and my cousin Tom was a captain here, and getting to wear the C now, it's just, it's one of those special moments that I've been waiting for for a really long time. Being in Minnesota, it's, there's really nothing like it all across the state, and growing up, I'd always skip school with my dad, even when I was in kindergarten, to go watch the high school state tournament, and finally be in high school and get that chance, I'd love to be there. and. Just great memories being outside on the rink and with friends, we were always outside. Ever since uh, back in 04 when we won our first state tournament, um, the captains went around to all the elementary schools and uh, came and talked to all of us little kids. And ever since then, I've dreamed of being there, doing the same thing someday. Well, I'll start with my dad. He played hockey all the way up and in, into college. and. I don't know, it's just playing, we, have a, we live on a lake and playing on the pond, it's just something that I love doing every day. Well, probably the biggest thing is uh, just trying to bring them together as a group, making sure they're, they're bonding together um, on and off the ice. I think that's our number one goal is to uh, get them to play hard together um, every night um, and to work hard for one another. We'll be an energetic team. We We'll be uh, playing the body a lot. We are high energy and great student section here, and we'll be hopefully putting up big scores. We're going to be good. We're going to win a lot of games, and it, we're just going to be a fun group of guys to watch. We like having fun together, and we'll have fun on the ice, score a lot of goals, sell it hard. We have a good team, young team. Uh, we're fast, and I think we've got a good opportunity to go far this year, and we'll put the puck in the net. With all the guys this year, I think we're just such a tight-knit group, and. Uh, I think it's achievable and it's nothing more than wanting to go to the X. Cougars boys hockey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so catching up on some of the, the schedules uh, upcoming and recent for these teams, starting with uh, the Bengals. Uh, they tied in their yep. first game of the Rose. It's been all W since. They'll be yeah. at Armstrong on the 20th and hosting Moorhead on the 21st and at Burnsville on the 26th. The Cougars uh, just uh, recorded a big win over Duluth East. So a 5-2 win there. Uh, they're on a three-game win streak after a tough overtime loss against Blaine. As, uh, they're looking really solid so yep. far this year. Yep. As well, Munson, great between the pipes for them. 42 saves against Duluth East, and both Gorowski's getting a goal and an assist uh, in that game. So upcoming, they have Holston Maple Grove. That's going to be a yep. big one. That's going to be huge. And then Holy Angels in the 26th. Their Schwann Cup tournament starting on the 26th for the 28th. Yep. Both Blaine and Centennial are in the Schwann Cup tournament. So uh, best of luck to all the yep. teams in their holiday tournaments. Yep. Yeah, pretty excited. The Bring Panthers. Park Panthers, yeah. They were, be at, uh, they were at Henry and Sibley. They won two in a row, then they lost, then they won, then they lost two. At Farmington, four to three, and at Monomita, five to three, uh, the, at St. Louis Park. The other SLP. Yes, at Irondale, at Winona, and St. Francis. So uh, the, the uh, Panthers, uh, yeah, yeah, looking all right. Yep. Holiday they've got a, they've got a Schwan Cup uh, thing, uh, the open game or tournament will be there. All right. Uh, girls basketball, the uh, the Bengals had a, a tough game against Elk River. They lost that one. And uh, they'll be Adenoka 
on the 20th and then uh, at Big Lake on uh, January 3rd. So hopefully uh, they get their first win. Yeah. We're looking for that yeah. elusive first win. The Cougars, uh, things going pretty well for them. Uh, just defeated Champa Park 57-39, uh, one of the better teams in their conference. So uh, looking strong for a conference title. They have a couple of other tough opponents, but uh, looking good so far. They'll be at Maple Grove on the 20th and uh, in the Hill Murray tournament yep. after Christmas. That'd be a big one. The Panthers, you know, Panthers are a little, they're, they're very good this year. They uh, lost a couple of their big games at Champlin and uh, Rogers in Cambridge, but then they won. They beat and Tatino? They, yeah, look at there, 68 to 56. Uh, Cooper, they uh, lost 66 to 52, but they got Chisago, a Roseville tournament, and at Irondale for uh, Panthers. So they're going all right. They'll be all right. Boys basketball, the, the Bengals, uh, a close uh, conference loss to Elk River, uh, 48 to 45. They'll be at an Elk on the 20th at Duluth, Duluth East on January 5th. And uh, the Cougars, well, they took on one of the, the top teams uh, last week in Park Center. Uh, they lost that one. It was a close game. Yeah. I was hoping to get highlights of that. We couldn't get it, unfortunately, as uh, that was a good one. But uh, they lost to Channel Park, followed that one up. They'll be hosting Maple Grove on the 20th. And then, as they do every year, they'll be in the Tartan Tournament, one of the best tournaments in the state, yep. uh, starting on uh, December 27th. Yeah, so the Panthers, actually uh, a couple of losses, but the Panthers are looking all right. They beat uh, Manju, and then uh, they, they put lost. up some numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Farmington, they, that was surprised. They got beat 97-95 in overtime, but uh, and lost to e Eastview. Uh, but beat uh, uh, Isani. Cambridge I Sandy, I was almost going to say, but I won't. At Como Park, they beat them 105 to 84. They'll be at Chisago, and there again, the Tartan Tournament, which is, yeah, it, it's a good, good tournament. Panthers won that tournament last year, so, and Irondale and Benilde. Benilde, one and eight, or, or they're, they've had they've had one win so far, so hmm. I'm really surprised on that, so. All right, so we're going to get to some more coaching captains here. All right. Uh, starting with the Blaine wrestling team. Please enjoy. Well, last season, uh, season was my first year here at Blaine. It went pretty well. We ended up the season as uh, 10 and 3, or 10 and 13, sorry. And um, a lot of those losses that we actually had, you know, where a match or two didn't go our way or a couple guys were hurt. So I think we could have easily been, you know, above 500. We're expected to, I think, finish above 500 again, maybe even do better than we did last year. My personal goals are uh, place in the sections, hopefully go to the state tournament. It's one of my biggest dreams to wrestle in the XL Energy Center. Last year, I was 25 and three, and I wrestled 195. I felt really good because I was a sophomore going to state and winning sections. And this year, I'm wrestling 220, and I look forward to having a good year. Last season went pretty good. Our team got better as a whole. This year, we plan on obviously beating everybody in our conference. We've been working hard towards that goal because I think this is going to be our best team ever. Our goal is to win the section, win the conference. That's our ultimate goal. That's our vision as a program. The returning all-conference wrestlers that we have from last year, Caleb Butler will be at 220. Uh, Joe Carlson and Malik Stewart will be fighting it out for 13. The other one will probably bump up to uh, 120. Um, and then Jack Duffy and Devin Crump are two of our seniors that I think are poised to uh, make a little bit of noise in the conference this year. We're young, we're an exciting team, and I really think we're up and coming. Every kid wrestles their heart out. A great sport to watch. All right, time for some wrestling. We'll give you something to grapple with. Anoka upset Centennial Cougars last week before taking aim at the Bengals. Time to bring down the lights and set the mood for wrestling under the 50-watt interrogation light. That's great for television, by the way. <laughs> Start us off at 106, Calvin. Jiminaro records the pin against Carter Newman. Cole Eikens made your decision over Joe Carlson. The Bengals get on the board at 120 when Malik Stewart pins Brody Milnes. 10-6 Anoka at that point. At 126, Liam Strong of Anoka pins Sam Peterson. That made it 16-6 at 132. 
Preston Flaherty with a nice, watch this, wait for it, Jeff, cement mixer before uh -oh. getting the pin against uh -oh. Jake Keller. Uh -oh. That's a cement mixer. Ooh. It's making me hungry. 138, Anoka's John Topic, 6-5 decision over Craig Bolster. 145, Anoka's Cody Crone pins Jamison Allen. 31-6, Anoka. Anoka adds pins from Hunter DeLeon, Brandon Crone, and Matt Nose. And Anoka secures victory, mathematically, of course. That's how you win. Before the Bengals get points again at 182, Jimmy Walraff gets a 6-2 decision over Royce Myron. Followed up by a very nice pin from Jimmy Kittleson, a Play of the Week nominee here for planting that, that, Jake that, Olson. Are you kidding? Right on the shoulders for the pin at 195. You got to like that. It's an impressive pin for Kittleson. At that point, it was, however, 49 to 15 Anoka after that pin. The Bengals feature an All State wrestler at 220, and that is Caleb Butler. And Butler records the pin over Jeremy Rodman. Butler's gone to state the last couple years, and he is a favorite to do that once again, possibly winning state at his new weight class, 220. And then at heavyweight, Devin Crump adds the final points for the Bengals, pinning his heavyweight opponent, no offense, Jesse Heifert. Anoka, the team victory, 49-27. to Congratulations to the Tornados. All right, before we go to break, Jeff, yes, we're going to ask a trivia question. Okay. Would you like to ask the, yeah, the nice I can folks do at that. home All who right. are watching the trivia question? Okay, when was the time, the last time, Spring Lake Park girls basketball went to state? And who was the coach? Oh, bonus points. Yeah. Who was the coach if and when Spring Lake Park went to state? When was the last time they did it? And if you get this question right, you could get yourself a Sports Den t-shirt. Yeah. It's a really nice t-shirt. And, and then you get, like, points, goal, because, you know, it's a... You get points? Yeah, because it's just like a rewards who, card. Who's thing? a coach? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Just swipe your card if you get it right, and we'll add no, points you know, to your card. No, it. Yeah. Jeff will autograph it. Yeah, no problem. There you go. Yeah. All right, we've got uh, more coaching captains and whatnot on the other side of this break. Don't go away. You're watching the holiday edition <laughs> of Sports Den. <laughs> You've had frozen pizza. You've had pizza old and cold. Oh, you've even had pizza that tastes like cardboard and ketchup. Well, what the heck? It's time to find out what pizza is supposed to taste like. It's time for Linwood Pizza. Linwood Pizza tastes the difference Fresh makes. In the nation, our agents are always there, helping make sure that when your life changes, your nationwide insurance coverage changes too. We put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation where protection is personal. Nationwide is on your side. In Anoka County, contact Twin Cities Insurance Group, your nationwide insurance agent. If you need seamless gutters, whether the job is large or small, you can say, I know a guy. For your full service landscaping, you can say, I know a guy. If you need commercial or residential lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. I'm Charlie Walker, and if you need professional seamless gutters, landscaping, and lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. With gold at all time high, take that rope and say bye bye. Earrings, bracelets, rings, and chains. We buy gold at your exchange. Don't send your gold to oh, someone strange. We buy gold at your exchange. Spring Lake Park, Frilly Blade. We buy gold at your exchange. Join Ben Hale and Danica Peterson every Friday on North Metro TV News. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, Last week's trivia nice. question, whether we knew it or not, yep. was what is the greatest Christmas cookie? The answer, of course, is peanut butter blossoms. No, it's the, I think it's a, the regular cut. You know, cut. Wrong! Peanut butter blossoms uh, is the answer. Oh, I don't peanut know. butter blossoms. Okay. Nice mm -hmm. try, though. Okay. 
More coaching captains. We've got some dance and some gymnastics. We're going to start with the Spring Lake Park Pantherettes yeah. dance team. Please enjoy. Last season we did an excellent job. We were conference uh, champions for jazz. We were section champions for jazz and kick, and then we made it to state for both dances. We had an excellent season last year. We would really like to make it to state again, and then we also want to make finals for both jazz and kick this year. We always want to exceed the things that we've accomplished in the past, um, and just continue to give it our, our 100%. I love to dance because it helps me show my emotions and how I feel. My mom took me to my first dance class when I was four years old, and ever since then I've just kept dancing. Our whole team is fabulous. They're all great. Um, even our rookies, some of our rookies coming on are just amazing young athletes, seventh and eighth graders. We're just so lucky to have the athletes that we do on our team. I started dance when I was a little girl and it's just been everything to me. Um, I can't imagine life without it and it's just really important, I think, to have a sport that's so important to you. I don't know where I would be without these girls. We have great technique, we're fun to watch, we're a very athletic team, we're going to do really awesome. We always have a goal to be in the top in our conference in our section and then go on to the state tournament and um, you know have goals of working as a team and that kind of thing. Last season went really well. We went to state in both jazz and kick. Um, we placed seventh in both, which was good for our team, but we are hoping to do better this year. Kathy, Brianna, and Peyton are our captains and they're all very strong with kick. Um, also strong jazz dancers. Um, but they're very good leaders. And then we have a couple juniors. Um, Carissa Bolton is one of them. She usually places high in our awards at our summer camp, so she's always fun to watch. It means a lot to be a leader in this team because I feel like all of us captains are like the motivation and like help have a good attitude and get us where we want to be. Being captain of this team has been a great honor and it means a lot to have people looking up to me and just to hold high expectations for the team. Our number one goal is to make it to state again in kick and jazz and to place in the top three in finals and to be section champs. I really love to dance because it lets me express myself and my feelings and when I'm out there the music just takes over. I love dance because it is something that I've grown up doing and it's something that has been in my family like my mom's dancer and my sister is also a dancer on the team so I just enjoy doing it. I love dance because it's like a whole different world like when I'm dancing I like forget about everything else and it's just something I've done since I was little. I think people should come out and watch our team this year because we have come together as a whole and we have a lot to bring to the season this year. We love our fans and it means so much to us to see people up in the stands all supporting us and cheering for us. Last season went really well. Our head coach ended up moving to Michigan for um, just to go there with their families and they were looking for a head coach so I took that job. We had a really good season last season. Our um, JV got first in the conference and our varsity got 
third in sections and we sent four girls to state, so it was a pretty good season. We pretty much lost all the team, so we only have a handful of girls that are here from last year. We have a couple that are returning from going to state last year. We have Jenny Dobius, who's a captain, and then Nicole Stott, who is a sophomore. And um, Kaylin Peterson went to state on balance beam two years ago. My favorite event is beam because it's a challenge and it takes a lot of confidence. Um, I love gymnastics because it's just a really fun sport and there's a lot of different things you can do and like the sky is the limit. It's a real honor to be captain because my teammates picked me for this position. Some of my goals this year are to um, just have a great season, have a lot of fun and possibly go to state again. Um, it's really an honor to be a captain. It's a lot of fun to be a captain of a really fun group of girls. I've been involved in gymnastics since I was, I think, two years old. I actually started here in the community ed, and I've really loved it. It's been a huge part of my life. People should come out to watch gymnastics because it's a fun sport to watch, and there's a lot of different talent this year. It's a lot of fun, and a lot of people don't know much about gymnastics, so it's cool to come out and check us out. Very nice, and be sure to support your Cougar Gymnastics, your yes. Panther Dance, your Bengalitz Dance, and all of our teams. I used to do that kind of stuff. What kind Slip of... Slip and jump and... Are you like a stuntman? You movie stuntman? Are you like yeah. a male Yeah, that gymnast? was it. That was it. That's what it was? Yep. Mm -hmm. That was a couple of years ago. It's been, <laughs> it's been a little <laughs> while since you did stunts on the flip books <laughs> that they made. Look at my stick figures doing the cartwheel. <laughs> Our athlete of the week this week, hey. T.C. Robinson. Yes. He's not a bear, but he's a really good no. basketball player. 34 <laughs> points for him in Tuesday night's contest yep. versus Como Park as they broke a hondo. Yeah. The triple digits almost broke the scoreboard. <laughs> but they, uh, <laughs> they won, and T.C. Robinson is our athlete of the week. Time now for our play, play of, of the week. week. Yeah, right there. Glug, <laughs> glug. I did not spill it. Good job. Here's our play of the week. It is Jimmy Kittleson going over the <laughs> shoulder and putting his opponent on the shoulders, getting the pin as he wraps him up in a package just in time for yeah. Christmas. Jimmy yeah. Kittleson, the pin. That, my friends, is our play of the week. You could have done that too, maybe. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Chisago Lakes at Spring Park St. Anthony. Rasslin is our Rasslin. coverage game. So uh, we're covering that match, yep. that meet Thursday. And then that's the end of our sports calendar. That's it. Uh, also the end of the Mayan calendar. You've got a couple <laughs> days now to pick up your umbrellas and sunglasses and to yep. get right with Jesus. 1,250. So, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Also, nothing scheduled for Saturday. Nope. <laughs> All right. Be sure to visit our web website, northmetrotv.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can uh, watch the coaching captains. You can yep. watch sports games. Mm -hmm. You can... Uh, do anything See you full want. full episodes of sports. And, yeah, anything yeah. you want. Yeah, no, I watch full episodes of sports then. Got it. All right, thanks for watching sports then. Hopefully we'll serenade you with a oh, quick oh, Christmas oh, song. Oh, oh, go oh, sports oh. teams, go Bengals. Go Panthers. Go Cougars. Go oh, Vikings here. See Vikes? Vikes. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Watch sports Arima! then. Hey! <laughs> Feliz Devon! <laughs> <laughs> well, Happy New what? Year! Mike got a bloody nose! <laughs> Who did you? Oh, like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm gonna> <laughs> he called the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> That's on TV, I don't know! Uh, what? Hey, Kenton, he's, he's stuck. Hey, Kenton's stuck. Merry Christmas! Uh huh. We're pretty good, weren't we? <laughs>